Okay, so the next uh, trend I want to discuss is trends in atomic radii. And as you can see here, this is what's shown, uh, what we observe experimentally. You can see that as we go from left to right, the size of the atoms gets smaller and smaller, so atomic radius or atomic radii decreases. But then as you go down, the atomic radii increases. Okay? And again, what you want to be able to do here is to use the explanation that we have using the concept of Z effective versus principal quantum number as you go across a period or as you go down a group to explain why these uh, trends are observed. And you can clearly see here that as we go from left to right, remember that what matters there is mostly Z effective. So if the Z effective goes up, but the principal quantum number stays about the same, then you're going to feel a lot stronger nuclear attraction to your valence shell. As a result, the size will shrink, right, because you're getting pulled in. The electron, the valence electron is pulled in as you go across uh, the period, okay? The valence electron is pulled in. It's attracted more strongly by the nucleus, okay? And that's why you see a shrinkage in the size of the atom. The opposite is true when you're going down a group. You're increasing the principal quantum number, which means you're going bigger and bigger and bigger because the principal quantum number value reflects the size of the orbital. So as you go to a higher value of n, then you're also getting to bigger um, sizes of atoms. Okay, That one should be relatively easy to explain. You can then use the same idea to talk about the concept of the ionic radii, okay? And this is just the radius of ions as opposed to atom, okay? Radius of ions, right? So is there a particular trend to it? Yes, there is. So the partially the trend in the ionic radii is shown uh, in this picture right here. And the reason why I'm showing this particular picture is because there is a clear comparison between the atomic, which is the yellow colored uh, spheres, versus the ionic, which is the blue colored spheres. Okay, So if you can uh, see clearly here, for the atom, it's very clear that as you go from uh, left to right, you get smaller. That's what we just talked about. right? So the uh, radius here is given in angstrom, so it's 1.52 angstroms for lithium and then 1.11 angstrom for beryllium. Okay, you can see that for sodium uh, to magnesium to aluminum, we also get smaller. That's just the topic we just discussed. And then as you go down a group, lithium to sodium to potassium and to rubidium, things get larger. That's all fine and good. We understand that already. But now let's talk about the ion version. Okay, what's the difference between the ion and the atom? The main difference that you notice, if you look carefully, is the fact that as you go across, for example, if you look at the sodium, magnesium, and aluminum atom, you get smaller, but the size really decreases by not a huge amount. So I'm just going to put out the numbers here. You can see that sodium is 186, uh, magnesium is 16, and then aluminum is 143. Okay, But for the ions, look at the difference. You started with 0.95, okay? and then it becomes 0.65, and then here it becomes 0.5. So by going from sodium to aluminum, you almost reduce the size by about half. Okay, So that's a pretty big reduction, and the question is why? Well, to understand this, we need to understand the concept of isoelectronic ions. What are isoelectronic ions? These are ions that have the same number of electrons, I should say. So not ions there, but electron. Okay. So what are some examples? Well, the three ions that we just talked about are actually isoelectronic. So if you think about it, we have aluminum, okay, 3 plus, and then we have magnesium, 2 plus, and then we have sodium plus, okay? Let's count the number of protons and electrons that these guys have. Protons is 11 for sodium plus, and electrons is 10. You go magnesium 2 plus, 12 protons, 10 electrons. Lastly, aluminum 3 plus, 13 protons, and 10 electrons. So in other words, you can see they all have the same number of electrons. If you go through the periodic table, you'll find that the 
there are other isoelectronic ions that also have 10 electrons. If you go back to period 2, for example, F minus, okay, O2 minus, and you can think of N3 minus, for example. But let's just work with these two right now, okay? So if I write this down, what's the difference here? I have 10 electrons for O2 minus, you can count that, and then I have 8 protons. And then for um, fluoride, I have 9 proton and 10 electron, okay? Now, how do we explain the size that we observe right here in this picture where the size of the aluminum ion is so much smaller in comparison to the size of the sodium ion, whereas the atom itself, the aluminum atom, doesn't change the size as much when compared to sodium atom? Well, the reason I hope is fairly clear right here. If you look at this, if these are all isoelectronic, in other words, they all have 10 electrons, that means where are the valence electron located? All of these would have the same configuration in terms of the electron as neon, which has 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. That means that the valence electron is located at n equals 2. Okay? However, the number of protons differ. For sodium, we have 11 protons. Magnesium, we have 12 protons. And aluminum, we have 13 protons. Well, what, do, what does the number of proton affect? Well, it affects the Z effective, right? In other words, the Z effective gets bigger, but all the N value is still the same. If that's the case, that means that as you increase Z effective, the size will get smaller because, again, just as we discussed earlier, the attraction is a lot stronger, so that makes all the electrons being pulled in closer to the nucleus, making the size a lot smaller. The opposite is true with these other two ions right here, okay? If you think about it, the opposite is happening right here. You have 10 electrons, which is n equals 2, but you have fewer protons. So in this case, we would expect the size of F minus to be actually larger compared to the size of F, and the size of O2 minus to be larger in comparison to oxygen. And we can look at these in the next slide. Okay so, okay, so here's a picture that shows you the comparison between these three ions right here and the two that we just talked about, which is oxygen and uh, fluorine, which has gained electrons to make them 10 electrons. You can see clearly, here's the fluorine atom, which has a, a radius of 72 picometer. And then when you make that a fluoride ion, you can see that the radius goes up to 136, so it becomes bigger. That's exactly what we said earlier, right? We were saying that by gaining the extra electron, the fluoride becomes bigger because it only has nine protons, so all the protons can't attract the electrons equally strongly. So as a result, the size gets bigger. Now look at uh, oxygen. Same thing is happening. You start with 74, but then the ion is 140, so it's quite a bit bigger, almost double the size of the atom, okay? So that's really what I want to show you for this particular um, concept of ionic radii. Basically, the trend is the same, uh, like your atomic radii. However, you have to take into account this interplay between the number of protons and the number of electrons, and the more protons you have versus electrons, the smaller the size is going to be versus the atom. The less protons you have, the bigger the size would be with compared to the atom.